Hello fellow Scratchers, this is Griff Patch. I'm sorry that we missed last week's video because I was on holiday and I'm still on my vacations now. So this is going to be a short video too. I'm going to try and do it in a bit of a um, truncated format and I'm doing it a bit off the cuff so it's not going to be quite as polished as normal. So forgive me for that, but off we go. Today we are going to add in the piranha plants to the Mario tile scrolling platformer. If we have a look at the enemy sprite, we should find that the... Uh, here we go, the piranha plant is costume number nine. So to use the piranha plant in the editor, we're going to have to drag the costume into the tiles sprite. Okay, so in the tiles sprite now, that has created a costume number 68. Great. We're going to have to map this to an editor key. So in the editor, numbering its tile 68, in the variables, come down and we want tile key map. There we go. So costume number 68, ah, there we go, we've got to wait for it already. This needs to be number nine because it's going to be an enemy. Okay, so that straight away, if I hide the list, we should now be able to run into the editor with the zero key and press the number nine until we see, there we go, the piranha plant. Now piranhas usually go up and down inside a pipe. Key number one is our pipe. So let's just add in a pipe here for our piranha plant to go into. And then press nine. Here's the piranha plant. And now look, this is the first problem we have to solve. The piranha plant can't sit directly in the middle of the pipe like we would like. So we're gonna have to change the position of this tile to make it look like it's in the middle. So to do that, we need to move across by half a tile and up by half a tile for this piranha plant. I'm going to press a zero key to save the level as I've done it so far, so we don't have to un redo that tube again. So in the tiles, yeah, so in this costume editor, we need to move the costume. We want to move it across by 16 and up by 16. But remember that these costumes, we've set size to 200%. So in fact, we only need to move it across by eight and up by eight, not 16. So zoom right out with the equals there, select the whole thing, and then using the arrow keys, so we can do fine control, we click right eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the up key eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then unselect. So that, I'm hoping, will position it perfectly. That was the tile sprite we were doing that in. So let's come across now. Press the editor key. Press the nine key. And ha 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 ha, there, look at that. So this is now looking great. This will position it perfectly in the middle of the pipe. So if I click the left button to lay that down, next problem, it doesn't appear. And that is normal uh, behavior for enemy sprites because we need to do a bit more work to get the enemy sprite working. So press the zero key again to save it and we'll exit out and go into the enemy. And I'll come into the code and we will get going. What we need is the define spawn type custom block. So here it is. This is where we're defining all of the different types of enemy that we can spawn. So we're going to want a new enemy type in here. So if I just create some space. Now I can remember what number it was. I think it was 68 for the piranha plant. And the type is piranha. Costume, ah, now, let's have a look. Costumes, for the actual enemy, it's costume number nine. So let's pop a nine in there. Width 16, yep. Height is double height, so 32, because the piranha plant takes up two full height of tiles. So that should be enough to at least get the piranha plant appearing on the screen. And here we go, look at this. Very good, so it's appearing now it's appearing where we actually set the sprite, not where we moved it to. So we're going to have to do a little bit more work to get this to appear in the right position too. Again, this one now needs to move across by 16 pixels. So what we are going to do is something slightly different to normal. Rather than doing this in the um, set type, I'm going to use a when I start as clone block. So in here we can check whether the type is equal to Piranha, like so. Next, we shall change the X position by 16. 
So this is the x variable right, rather than position. So that should mean it now spawns across by 16 pixels. Let's run that. Okay, excellent. So with this piranha plant centered perfectly on the pipe, how about we try and move the piranha down into the pipe a little bit? To do that, we're going to change y by negative 16. That should move it down just a touch. So let's just run that again. Okay, can you spot the problem? So the piranha plant has moved down, but it has not moved into the pipe whatsoever. It's positioned right over the top. So to fix this, we're going to have to move this behind all of the tiles. But careful not to move it behind the background sprite, otherwise it'll disappear completely. So if we move this to the back layer first, as I said, this will mean we can no longer see it at all, which is no good. We need to move it back in front of these sprites. So to do that, we go forward, not by one layer, but by the number stored in layers background. Do you remember this variable? We created this to keep a record of how many sprites there were in the background so that we could do exactly what we're doing now, which is to move things back in front of the layer behind. So there we go. This is now positioned beautifully behind the pipe, but in front of the back layers. Great. Now, one problem that this is going to show up, if I go into the level editor, this is still positioned down a little bit here, and I want this to be positioned where it originally was. So to fix that, why not surround the change Y here with a check to see that we're in the editor or not. So if editor is less than one. Okay, so now it's only going to move us down and behind everything if we are in the editor. So if I run the game, it's behind the pipe, press zero, and now it's exactly where we positioned it, which is above the pipe there. Super. Okay, so how about next we get this little piranha plant to open and shut his mouth? To do that, we need to find the move enemy receiver here. This deals with all of the movement of our enemy sprites. If we scroll down, we should find, here we go. Let's do uh, this, duplicate this if type equals life. Okay, so what our type is going to be is piranha. And of course, we're not going to tick life in here. We're going to have to have a new custom block. And let's pop this in the list of these different things that we create. So we're going to need a new custom block and we'll call it tick piranha to be consistent. Like so, and run without screen refresh. Great. Let's plop this over here. And of course we need to make use of it in here. So find the tick piranha, drop it in there. So if tick type equals piranha, then tick piranha. And what we'll do in here, whoops, where am I gone? There he is. What are we gonna do? Let's change the costume. So we'll change frame by one, because frame will keep track of uh, its animation. And we'll set costume. Do you remember what the first costume number was? Let's just check again. There we go, costume number nine. So start with costume number nine. So we're going to want two different costume changes. If we look at the costumes, we've got costume nine and we've got costume ten like so, and we want to animate back and forth between the two. So to do that, we use our friendly mod operator. So two frames to animate between. And now we're going to use frame in here, but we always have a floor of frame divided by, and now this is how many frames the animation wants to take before moving on to the next costume. And we're going to have four. So pop that into this side of the mod. And there you go. And if we want it to go quicker, we can change this four to say a two. Wow, look at that, super fast. Or a three. No, I like four, it's good. Perfect. So next up, how about getting this little guy to move up and down? Well, obviously we can put a change Y in here and just drop it in here and woohoo, up it goes. And minus one goes back down. And back up. Okay, stop that. So up and down is easy peasy. How are we going to make it go up and down when we want it to go up and down? 
what we'll do is a technique very similar to what we've done with this costume here, because the up and down motion will be on a cycling loop. Um, the only difference is we want it to stay still for a bit, then move up, stay still, and then move down. So let's use the temp variable. That just means temporary. I use that for a lot of things. So set temp to, uh, and we'll use mod again. And I'm going to have eight stages of movement. Um, I'll show you that a bit more in the detail in a second. And on the left, we're going to use a divide. And we're going to have frame again. And now this number. This is how many frames it does something for. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the, move the piranha plant up for 16 frames and down for 16 frames. So we're going to divide by 16 here to keep track of how many frames it moves for. Okay, so let's try and use this. What it means I should be able to do is compare frame to something. Um, but I'm going to use the floor of frame because I didn't use a floor in here like I would in the uh, costume. So floor of frame equals. Now this number frame, uh, oh no, beg your pardon, beg your pardon. Temp, floor of temp. So temp will go from zero up to seven because I'm modding it by eight and it will repeat and go from zero to seven again. And it stays on a number for 16 frames. So when temp reaches four, I'm going to change my Y to make it move upwards. And I'm going to move it up by four pixels at a time. Okay, so if I do 16 times four, that will move it up by 64, which is the full height of the enemy. So if I run that, okay, so that now moves up by 64 pixels every now and again, which is fine because we're going to move it down again, otherwise it looks a bit silly. So duplicate that, and on number seven, we shall move down by minus four. So let's run that. Okay, it goes up, and then it goes down. And then it goes up, and then it goes down. So this is almost working. We just need to make sure that it is behind the pipe completely when it starts. Um, now, it's not quite evenly timed. So this is now moving up and then down, but it stays down for longer than it stays up. That's because I've used four and seven. Now, if I that as a three instead, it would now move up and down equally spaced. And if I was put this much lower, it would then go up and wait. Oh, I've done bad timing there. Something run it again. Now it'll stay up for a lot longer than it stays down. See that? But four is good for me. I want it to stay down for a little bit longer to give the player a bit more time. So now if we want this now to appear right behind the pipe, we're going to have to go to the when I start as a clone again. And now I'm moving down by minus 16. I need to move down by minus 64 to get right behind the pipe. Let's run that. There we go. Excellent. So this is looking really good now. So I can imagine playing this game quite happily. Any problem is... So I'm completely invulnerable to this guy at the moment, so I need to add in Mario's death here. So let's see about doing that. So back to the Tick Piranha script. Let's put this at the bottom of this script here. We'll have an if touching Mario, and then we broadcast the Mario lose life. Now that's pretty standard, so I assume that will work straight away. Let's just see. Yep. That does him in well and truly. But there is one slight problem here. Let me show you it to you. Yep, I die even when the plant is down. Now, why is that? Listen to the level editor here. The reason that we're having that problem is that even when Mario is just standing on top of this pipe, the plant is just here. And he is actually, even though he's hidden, he's just, just, just touching Mario's foot, which kills him. So that's no use. So how about instead we have a bit of a check to make sure that the plant is up or down before we kill Mario. So let's put an if around this here to stop it from triggering under certain conditions. And what I shall say is I shall check this temp 
variable because I know the plant is not moving up unless temp reaches the 4 value. But I'm not going to say 4. What I'm going to do is 4.2, something slightly bigger. Now this is why I didn't put the floor in the original assignment up here, because I wanted to make sure that temp could be a value with a decimal place. Now what this means is, if I run the project, if I stand on top of here, like this, now, did you see that? The plant was allowed to come up just a little bit before it killed me. If I hadn't put that 0.2, it would have killed me as soon as it popped up slightly, and you wouldn't be able to see the plant, and that would be a little bit unfair. So, are we there? Let me just press the zero key. Yeah, so the plant is appearing correctly. And when I press zero again, it disappears, and it starts its little root. That's really, really good. Yeah. I think we've got it. Okay, well it's great to have more enemies in this game now than just the Goombas. Piranha plants are an absolute vital part of Mario. Um, next up perhaps would be the Koopas. Now you might be able to find that you can start doing the Koopas yourself, based off the same code as the Goombas. In fact, you can use the same Goomba walking code that the Goomba uses. What is a little bit more tricky is the Koopa shells. Now that's been uh, driving me a little bit mad trying to work out the best way to show you how to do that. But I won't be able to do it this time, I'm sorry. And that then will be the end of the video. I look forward to seeing you again next time. If you've liked this video, then click the uh, like button, love button, whatever it's called in YouTube, and subscribe to the channel not to miss any future videos. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching and scratch on guys.